I hope you're having a great day and welcome to this new Blender tutorial in which we're going to learn to make this animation you're watching right now on the screen. As you can see it looks really nice and it doesn't take as much time as it appears to. So without anything else to say let's just begin with the tutorial. The first thing we'd have to do as always is to delete everything we have on the scene because we're not going to be using that right now and we're going to press shift A to add a um, text into our scene and then we're going to press tab to go into the edit mode and we can now uh, edit the text we're going to have on the screen. I'm going to choose limo because just because, <laughs> and I'm gonna rotate this text uh, in the x-axis 90 degrees. Now, I wanna change the font to use the same font I use it in the channel name, so I will come here to the text menu and go into the font, and I'm gonna click into this folder and pick the typography I have, I always use for this channel, and I'm and once I have it here into my scene, you can pick any of the ones you have right here. If you want to use a different typography than, than the one uh, Blender has by default, you will have to download it or have it someplace in your computer to, for being able to import it into, the, into Blender. So once we have done that, uh, you have to press right click into the text and click on convert to mesh now we can press the we can go into the edit mode and select what we have so now we know that it is a mesh and we're gonna go into the geometry nodes panel right from above here and we're gonna add a new geometry nodes map and what we're gonna do right here is to put a instance on points right here this is gonna disappear our text, but for now it is okay. And we're gonna add a sphere. Here it is. We're gonna plug the mesh into the instance and we're gonna lower down a little bit the, the subdivisions of the sphere because we're gonna generate a lot of spheres and if we don't, the composition will get really heavy. And what we can do to fix this um, awful subdivisions it has all around we have to add a set shade smooth here it is and now they are softer we can still see some corners like in the edges of the mesh but once we scale them down we will have no problem now we're gonna put this in something like 0.1 maybe smaller 0.01 Let's put 0, 07. I mean, 0, 03. That's it. And now, what we have to do is to put more spheres into our text so that we can read it. And to do that, we have to add a distribute points on faces. And now we have a density controller that will let us add more or less spheres into our instance on points so i'll put something like twenty thousand here it might feel like a lot but you'll see how this works pretty well when we go on with the tutorial so i will now scale our spheres with a random value And this random value, I will plug it into the scale, as I said. And I will make the maximum value that we can get something like 0.5, let's say. And now we have a lot of spheres that are like maximum this size of the bigger, bigger ones. We can now read what it's saying and you can see that it looks pretty nice, but it is really flat actually when we see it from one side. So what I'm going to do next is to move this a little bit to the right and press Shift A and then S to add a, a translate 
instances. Here it is. I'm gonna add it right here and I'm gonna put a new random value down here so that each uh, instance moves like differently forward in in our in our composition. I'm gonna plug this into the translation and as you can see everything moved straight forward to the to the right. Well like to the positive numbers because this is the positive y, positive x and positive z. So what we have to do here is to separate each one of those, pressing shift A and S again to search a new node and we're gonna search for a combine XYC node. We're gonna plug it right here and now the Z axis is actually the one that goes up. You can see it right here. The Z axis is the one that is vertical, but our text is rotated. When we first put it into the scene, it was laying down on 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 the floor, let's say, and the Z axis was pointing to the sky, but now we, we've rotated it 90 degrees. So the, the Z axis is now looking to uh, like it, like if it was the Y axis. So in order to make these uh, points move instead of to the right, to the front, to give it a little bit like 3D aspect, we have to unplug this from the X value and plug it into the Z value because we wanted it on the Y. So now the Z value is right here. And as you can see now, points are being distributed, distributed like a little bit to the front, but this value is too big. So the, the shape loses a lot, uh, uh, except if you look at it from the front. And maybe it could be a nice effect to look at it from the side and then come here to the front and, and show the silhouette of the letters. But anyway, if you want to fix this, that is one of what I'm going to do next, is to, you have to put a smaller value here, something about 0.5, I think. Maybe 0.3 will be enough. And that's it. We now have um, these scale letters, like, coming to the front. And what we have to do now to make uh, different colors in, in this... Um, balls is to duplicate all of this we have right here and put it up and plot a geometry and the output right here and it this will um like unplug the thing we had plugged in before so we have to put here a join geometry node plug it right here and then join put, uh, plug the geometry into the geometry this really only made a copy of this thing, but to make it like a different object, we have to put here a value like, let's say 10,000, something different to change the density. And then we change right here in the UV sphere radius. We're gonna change it, change it to something about 0 0.03, let's say. And now, the only thing we have to do is to text, put, uh, apply some materials to our geometry. And to do that, we have to come here to the right side, to the materials panel, and click on new, and then add a new one. And the first one is going to call it uh, simply one, and then the second one we're going to call it two. And I'm going to pick uh, in the number one the color of the, this channel, and put um, CCFF00, that is exactly the color of the channel, you can pick any color you want, right here, and then go to the second material and put it white completely. And then I'm gonna put here a set material node, and then duplicate this one and put it below. We can go right here to the to the material preview uh, viewport and then pick right here the green one and here the white one. Right now we can't see anything and let me let me see why is that. And that's it. The reason why we couldn't see any of this is because we had a 0.3 value uh, 
uh, 0.3 meters radius in our UV, UV sphere and the ones we had in green color were 0.2 and that made the green dots to be smaller than the ones we we had in white so to make uh, this, these ones appear we had to make the ones that are in green and that we wanted to make visible a little bit bigger and once that is made we have finished our modeling let's say phase or no, no distribution phase and to animate this thing what we have to do is to pull from here at the corner a little new section and ask it to be a timeline now we're gonna go to the frame let's say 40 maybe 50 yeah 50 will be just fine and press the letter i with our mouse above of the value of density of the top side and then go to the butt side and press i again and go to the beginning of the animation and set these two values to zero and press i and then zero and press i and now if we press play right here from this frame where we started we can see our bubbles will be appearing inside of our uh, like in our mesh and now we have only to set the end to the frame in which we finished our animation and we will have the name appearing and if we want to we can go another 60 frames forward and click 120 here to extend the duration of the animation and put here again zero insert a keyframe with the i key and then zero and a new keyframe right here and now the name appears and this appears and with that we've made a perfect loop well not a perfect loop but we've made it loop basically and we can add right here uh, let's go back to the viewport now that we have our animation ready and let's put a plane right here we're gonna put it behind our text maybe below our text is just fine let's put it a little bit below with G and then Z to move it we press G and Z to to lock our movement to the Z axis and then we're gonna press tab to go into the edit mode the we're gonna press 2 to stop selecting faces and we're gonna extrude this edge in the Z axis again pressing Z and then pressing X Z sorry and we're gonna press A and add a camera we're gonna look our composition from a place we like how it looks and then maybe right here is a little bit too from the side i'm gonna make it from the front maybe right here and then we're gonna with the camera selected we're gonna go to view align view and align active camera to view now this active camera has by default a y rotation of 0.8 we're gonna just remove that and now we can we can press n to open this little mini menu on the side and then check the lock camera to view and we have we can move our camera to um, to a place where we like how our composition looks i'm gonna put it something around here that's it and now we just have to go select our our scene and scale it a little bit so that we don't see any uh, part of uh, empty space uh, in the sides and I'm gonna change the the format of my camera to 920 and 920 pixels and like that we have a square uh, format right here and it's just fine I will just uh, maybe scale this. This is it's the same if you don't, but I don't like to look away and see that the camera is going into the plane. So I'm just gonna scale it right there, and I'm gonna pick the scene parameters and 
select cycles right here. You can change to GPU compute in case you, you have one and the samples to 100 because we won't need too much samples for this scene. Now we can see right there how our composition looks and I'm gonna press Shift A and select a area light. I'm gonna get this area light above our composition right there a little bit lower and I'm gonna make a copy of this with shift D and move it above our camera and point it to the text rotating it in the X axis and I'm gonna rotate it a little bit more for it to point to the background and I will put in power something like maybe 30 it could be even 40. Yeah, I think 40 is fine. And now we can see how our composition is looking right here. And to render our animation, the only thing we would have to do is to maybe lower a little bit these samples because we won't need too much samples for this uh, for this uh, composition. And for me to be able, I will move a little bit my camera to the back let me select my camera and i will move it on the y axis something about something like this a little bit more maybe because i'm gonna be posting this in different places so i want uh, to be able to make a cut right here and not cutting my my name so i'm just gonna scale this again I'm gonna scale this right here and now I just have to redimension my my lights because since our scene is bigger we have to make the intensity of the lights also bigger let me put something like 30 right here maybe 40 and then right here 100 that looks nice and now once I have this you can see the animation is going on if I move a little bit backwards, some of the spheres will disappear. And now I only have to go to the uh, right uh, to the um, output properties and select the folder in which I want my animation to be stored and click accept. Now I'm gonna leave this in PNG because it gives me images that have a lot of a high quality definition, and I'm gonna click render animation. And that's all you have to do to make this beautiful animation. Once you have all your frames, all you have to do is to put them into an edit editing program. It could be any of all of the editing programs you have uh, online. I hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, please like and subscribe. Keep practicing a lot and I'll hope to see you in the next tutorial.